So today we're going to compare uh, popcorn with the puffed rice cakes. Now, of course, we're not going to talk about which one is keto friendly because you already know that both of them are not keto friendly. But when I was 16 years old, uh, I got a job at a theater and I was officially the popcorn maker. I would make unbelievably delicious popcorn and I had it down to a science. I would never burn it. It tasted delicious. It was non-GMO back then, and we I think we cooked it with peanut oil. And at the end of the night, I would fill a garbage bag full of popcorn, bring it home, and my dad and I would eat the entire thing within probably two nights. So I ate a tremendous amount of popcorn. I loved it, but I don't eat popcorn anymore. But I do know that a lot of people crave it. They love it. Uh, but let's just talk about the difference between popcorn versus rice cakes. If we look at the glycemic index, which is an index that determines how fast your blood glucose is elevated, okay? So the glycemic index for popcorn is 79, so that's pretty high. But the glycemic index for rice cake is 82, much worse. Now, if we just take, um, let's say, 3.5 ounces, which is 100 grams, it's not that much, you can see it contains a lot of carbs, 78 grams of carbs. If we minus the 15 grams of fiber, it comes out to 63 grams of net carbs. So right there, that exceeds the 50 grams if you're on the ketogenic diet. So it's very difficult to eat any amount of popcorn and stay in ketosis. And the other problem is that it turns into sugar so fast, even a small amount is going to affect your blood sugars. So when you're on the ketogenic diet, the types of carbs that you should have shouldn't be the ones that are high on the glycemic index. Now, when we deal with the rice cakes, we have a whole lot of nothing because it doesn't have any fiber. It has basically zero nutrition. It's low fat though, right? It's pure starchy carbs with some sugar. So this is really gonna spike your blood sugars actually a lot more than popcorn. Now, most of the corn, like 95% is GMO, okay? Unless you're doing organic. And if you're going to the movies, they'll put some type of butter flavoring on it, which is a chemical that potentially could lead to a uh, lung disease. So it has some side effects. So it's not just the popcorn, it's what they put on the popcorn. The so-called butter, sometimes it's trans fats. And some people eat the caramelized popcorn, which has the sugar in it. So all these things add to the glycemic index spike. And of course, then you have the oil that the popcorn is cooked in. Um, you have cottonseed, canola, corn oil, soy oil, they're all GMO. Americans consume a lot of popcorn, like 60 quarts per year per person. There are traces amount of nutrients in popcorn, but the intense heat through cooking definitely destroys a good portion of the phytonutrients. Now, if we get to rice cakes, we have arsenic. Rice contains arsenic. Also, the puffed rice, as in cereal or those puffed rice cakes, uh, contains aloxin. Now, there's an interesting book by a guy by the name of uh, Paul Stitt uh, entitled Beating the Food Giants. And Paul Stitt was a food biochemist, and he would do experiments on these different cereals. And in this book, he talked about when you heat uh, rice and you puff it, it releases this poison, aloxin, which is very toxic to rodents like mice. And if you look up aloxin on animal studies, it shows that it, it can induce diabetes type 1. Now, I realize that these are animal studies, not human studies, and there is no studies that show that aloxin has any effect on humans. Now, in summary, if we compare rice cakes to popcorn, they both have some major disadvantages. But if you were going to do organic popcorn without this stuff right here, um, popcorn might be slightly better than rice cakes. All right, thanks for watching. So if you want more knowledge on how to create a healthy body, subscribe now and get daily notifications.